Okay, so I thought I would do the quick lesson on how to teach the American Impressionism um, as we only had a few attendants to the workshop. So I started the class out with um, basically what you're seeing here. Um, this is a smaller version. And then I talked to them about what Impressionism means and the two different meanings that maybe they can come up with and guess for you. I said the first one was a kid said, you know, oh, well, I want to make a good impression. And then um, I ex explained to them, like, how do you take a, if you took a piece of clay and you put your thumb in it, what is that? Is that also? And so what the idea of an impression versus like a real um, photograph or realism. Um, and then I showed them a couple of famous impressionist paintings, which was Starry Night and the Lily Pads. And they were able to guess what artists um, did those and I explained to them that they were the French artists so that the Americans went over to learn from them and that's how we came up with Ameri American Impressionism. So um, I went in then into the history of uh, which you can find on the website for the Metropolitan Museum you can find the history of American um, Impressionism and basically it boils down to um, after the indu Industrial Revolution the Americans suddenly had a lot more money they could travel they wanted to collect art because they were building big houses. So the American artists went over to Paris to learn about Impressionism. And it was really interesting because the, they actually did not like it at first. Um, so read up on that. But basically, we, we, we didn't have to do portraiture anymore because we had a camera. And a camera, they let them guess, why do we not need to sit for a portrait any longer? So there you go. There's kind of the background that I talked about. OK, so then you start off with a pencil and we're going to do very light lines. We're going to do three lines on our paper. The first one is going to represent where the sky and the mountains sort of sky mountains and then where the water is going to be. All right that's all you're going to need for that. We don't need water because we're not going to we could use just a um, napkin to clean our brushes. We're never going to have to like wash it off completely because as you can see from the end result, you don't really, they're going to overlay and we're going to do a lot of pixelated stuff. So first instruction is grab a big ball, uh, dollop of blue and then just simply dab it into the white. See how we have a little bit of white and a lot of blue? And we're going to run the brush right straight across the top of the page. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. So here I am. I have to get more paint because this didn't get enough on it. And I'm going to go straight across. And we're going to see that blue and white kind of smear together to kind of form clouds of the sky. Tell them not to worry about worrying about these lines here. We're going to go ahead and cover them up. Nothing's perfect in nature. And we are almost done with the sky. So I'm going to add a little bit of curve to that. And don't worry about going, getting it perfect because we're going to overlay. Okay, so now I'm done with blue on the top. And there's quite a bit left on my brush. So I just told the kids to go ahead and wipe a little bit off. Just we're not going for perfection here. And then we're going to pick up yellow for the sky, uh, the mountains and go ahead and put the yellow straight up right on there and they can cross over and what happens when yellow hits blue whoops that was not in my intention what happens when yellow hits blue it would get a little green in there which is cool because this is sort of a mountain behind there and I'm really not picking up enough and what I found out was we need a lot of more blue and um, brown than anything on the palette. You don't need a lot of the other colors. All right. Doesn't even have to be perfect at all. Okay, there's that. There's your mountains. And now we're hitting the water. So a lot, a lot of blue on your brush and straight across. That's 
the water. We're only going to go about halfway. We probably need another line, come to think of it, because now I'm looking at it, we actually start brown underneath. And you can add a little bit of white in there, give that water some texture. All right, there we're done with blue. No, hold on, let me fix. We're done with blue. Now we're gonna pick up brown. I don't know how brown this is. This is not the colors that I've bought. And what we're gonna do with brown is we're going to dab it. And this is gonna give us that pixelated. And we don't have to cover every little bit because we're gonna go over it with green after this. So you want them to just, and go, go ahead and overlay over the blue. So just dab, dab, dab. I had some experiences with that brush that I bought. I bought some inexpensive brushes from Harbor Freight. They're gonna work fine for this project. They're um, like 36 of them for $3. So don't worry if they just ruin the brushes. It's fine. All right. So don't cover up all the white, but try to get it in there. Now let's go ahead and leave the paint on there, grab some green, and start doing it throughout here too. What we're making is a garden. This is going to turn into a garden. They can take the green and do some swishy lines. If for the older kids, we may want to give them a small teeny brush to give them detail. Okay, and we got, we've got some white in there and that's fine. Now let's bring uh, the tree in, grab some brown, make a tree and just sort of and hit, hit the mountains. We're gonna be adding some color in this, so just keep dabbing. We can do a bush right here. This is a bush and see how the colors are not perfect. It's fine that they're blending. Maybe add some green. Green. Grab some white. Not too much though. Be careful. It could be. And do some white highlights. Just tiny, tiny little dots. White highlights. Oh, that heavy. Whoops. That's all right. The cool part, and you can tell them the cool part about this impressionism and this sort of dabbing effect is that you really can't make a mistake. You can't, you can just cover it up. So let's grab some red, which we really don't need a lot of, and throw in some, maybe some flowers. And don't forget to put, have them put um, their name on the back of this because it's gonna need to dry before you start, of course. All right, maybe some more white, maybe some blue. You notice I didn't use a huge amount of blue here, but basically, with, oh yes, yellow. How about some yellow, put some yellow. Thank you, Parker. So really just let them have at it. This only took about an hour and a half class. I probably spent more time talking and then more time with them sort of worrying that they had, you know, to get things perfect. Um, and so I really tried to stress to them that, that nothing's perfect in art, nothing's per perfect in the world. <laughs> and then when you, all is said and done, when you hold, the, you got this, when you hold it way far back here, it looks a lot more like a tree or a bush, right? So let's worry about it not up close, but more what does it going to look like far away? So anyway, I could sit here and dab forever and make it more and more like detailed, but I, that's the gist of the project. And hopefully that helps our docents get through the project. Thanks so much. Good luck. It's a lot of fun to teach.